I like to work along the center line because the center line is the neutral axis. It does not change. If I take a bar and bend it, the outside is straight, put under tension, it changes dimension. The inside bend is put under compression, it changes dimension. But the neutral axis, the center line of the bar, remains a constant. And so that's where I'm going to sit. I find it easier to work. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to step out from here. One, two, three, four, five. 20. Could you do that again just to make sure? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. 19 and 20. <laughs> okay, so 20 of half inch increments, so 20 divided by 2 gives me 10 inches. And that's from that real mark, not from my Nick Bold weld from my real end down to the midline here. Now, I would like to put this, these two, and be careful with my words here, they are upset <coughs> corners. Sometimes I'll make a slip and I'll call it an upset square corner, that's not correct. That is not square, that is not 90 degrees. It is open from 90 degrees. Okay? If you make a square corner, a 90 degree corner, when you open it out to make it fit this drawing, this is the stress riser. That's where the crack will, not may, will occur. Okay, as you open it out. So don't make them 90 degrees, make them open from 90 degrees and leave them open. So it's an upset corner, not an upset square. So that's 10 inches from the neutral axis to here. I have three quarters by half. What I would like to do is I'd like to be able to come up here, put a center punch mark in here and make this square corner. But how far back from the end? The information is in here. Ten inches. Not ten inches because that's tapered. That mm -hmm. hmm. Isn't it? It tapers from half inch here down to whatever that is. I'm going to call this five sixteenths. Because it's quarter inch up here now. Yeah? Let's call it five sixteenths. So if it goes from half inch down to five sixteenths over ten inches, now it's three quarters of an inch wide here, and it's three quarters of an inch wide there. So the width is a constant. So I could do it by a volume calculation, but I don't need to do volume because the width is a constant. I can do it just by an area of the side calculation. It just cuts out an extra little bit of the map. So the first thing I'm going to do is average out what this is. It goes from half inch to five sixteenths. <coughs> okay, and I'm going to write this down. So we got half an inch plus five sixteenths. I've added the two together, and if I want an average, what do I do? Divided by the number of elements I've got in there, which is two. Okay? Now I'm going to simplify this, and I'm going to put, make those decimals. Okay? But that's all that I'm going to do, is if I average it out, divide it by two, it gives me uh, the average height. And then if I put that in brackets, and multiply that by my length, 10 inches, I will have an area. Okay? Width times length is area. So this is my average width times length will give me my area. And then I can compare that to my parent um, bar. Vice. The reason I do it in the vise is purely to save wear and tear on my wrist. Doing this against my wrist for as many times as we do this, I, I'm going to work here. I don't care if it's more efficient, less efficient, it saves wear and tear on my body. And I have, the mark is now, right there. It's out from the edge of the vise, it's right there. See that? 
write that. Out about 9 sixteenths to 5 eighths. I'm going to place my bending fork about 9 sixteenths to 5 eighths. And so when I bend that to not quite 90 degrees, my center punch mark is in the middle of the bend because my two feather points or my two fulcrums were equidistant from the center. When I do a square corner bend or an upset square corner bend, uh, these are the things I do. That's optional. <laughs> from the bend, move it out about half an inch. Clamp it. Take some tongs and lock on that far arm. What I don't want is that arm to come to 90 degrees. I'm going to match the flat face of my hammer to that angle. I'm going to start here where it's flat. My hammer does not come past the inside edge of the stock. It's always above that. I don't want to come down here because if it comes down here, the temptation is to allow the, uh, the hammer to rotate around the corner. You know, thin the corner. Mark, yeah. ever upset that area where you're making that corner? We, we have to upset it. Well, in essence, what's happening is I'm taking material from the inside of the bend, which has been compressed and pooched a little bit. I basically want to move that out to the outside of the bend which has been stretched and drawn down. That's all I'm doing. Uh, and I'm doing it through upsetting. So you don't bump it out before you... I could, but that would give me a different result when I finished. That would give me a radius on the, a gusset basically on the inside of the corner. By doing this method I get a sharp inside and a sharp outside. If I bump up, then I'll have a gusset on the inside. So this time what I'm going to do is put the long arm out, match <coughs> the angle, I know that's not efficient because it's bouncing, it's better than pounding it through my wrist. I'm holding it flat so you can see both sides are up. Now if you want to work here, you can see all that's going through my wrist. It's a very powerful move. So there's ten of these, the three of these. And all I'm going to do is take the end, and as I'm working here, I'm pulling this around. as before, make sure the center punch mark is out about 5 eighths of an inch or so. Come out past that, 5 eighths of an inch or so. And the reason for the gap is, is so that when you bend around here to 90 degrees, I'm, I'm a bit short. You can see that my tool now is hitting the vise. If I had been out just another 16th of an inch, uh, I could have completed my bend without hitting the tool. The energy can be from the inside of the bend coming out, or from the outside of the bend coming in. So I'm working now from the top of the bend, driving the energy through, and the energy is depleting as it gets to the vise. With me? Yeah. Sorry? As long as your materials hold. Now, I worked here, so I'm working from the outside, the energy is at the maximum in the bend and it's depleting as it gets to the leg. I could also work here. 
but the energy is starting from the leg, depleting until it gets to the corner. Sometimes you have no option, but the energy is coming into the corner from the opposite way. So put maximum effect out here, minimum effect in the corner, as opposed to maximum effect in the corner, ma uh, maximum effect in the corner, minimum effect on the leg. So depending which direction you hit that from, will give you a different result. I'm going to chew up my bend a little bit here. 